Back in the 1990s, automakers were scrambling to meet California's new emissions rules. GM had the S10 EV and the EV1, Toyota had the RAV4 EV, Nissan had the Ultra, which super forgettable, Ford had the Ranger EV, and Honda, well, Honda built something you've probably never even heard of. Not the Insight, but their very first purpose-built EV, the Honda EV Plus. A car that cost about $54,000 in the late 1990s, or over $100,000 in today's money. It had about 80 miles of range, futuristic features like regenerative braking and a heat pump, and yet almost every single one was eventually destroyed. So in this episode, let's break down how the EV Plus came to be, why it mattered, and why you've almost definitely never seen one in the wild. The EV Plus story really starts not with Honda, but with California. Back in the late 1980s, California's smog problem was so bad that the state decided to take matters into its own hands. The California Air Resources Board, or CARB, had the authority under the Federal Clean Air Act to set its own emission standards. In 1990, CARB rolled out the famous Zero Emission Vehicle Mandate. It said that starting in 1998, 2% of manufacturer sales in California had to be zero emission vehicles. That number would rise to 5% by 2001 and 10% by 2003. For big automakers, this was an absolute nightmare. Most of them had spent decades perfecting gas engines, not experimenting with batteries. But if they wanted to keep selling cars in California, one of the largest car markets in the entire world, they had no choice but to play along. This is why the 1990s gave us a strange wave of early EVs. GM had the EV1, there was the Ranger EV, Toyota had the RAV4 EV, and Honda, being the last Japanese automaker to start EV research, decided to build something of its own. Early efforts weren't promising. They built a Civic hatchback prototype stuffed with off-the-shelf motors and lead-acid batteries. It technically worked, but project leader, and I'm going to completely botch this, but Junshi Akari hated it. He famously yelled at the team and he said, You call this a car? Why don't you just dig a hole and bury it? However, that anger actually set the tone for the entire program. Honda didn't want to just make a golf cart with doors. They wanted a purpose-built electric vehicle with no compromises. Something that could carry four passengers, look like a real car, and most importantly, meet CARB's ZEV requirements. So, by the early 1990s, Honda had thrown 100 employees at the project. They started working with battery manufacturers, eventually pushing for a new global standard in nickel metal hydride, or NIMH, battery formats. They also designed their own brushless DC motor because nothing on the market was efficient enough for their standards. In short, Honda decided to do what Honda always does, engineer everything in-house until it worked. Finally, in April 1997, Honda unveiled the production version, the Honda EV+. Built in Japan, around 300 examples would be made between 1997 and 1999. Unlike GM's EV1, which was a sleek 2 seat coupe, Honda went with a three-door hatchback with seating for four. It was actually related to the Honda logo platform, though heavily re-engineered to fit the massive NIMH battery pack under the floor. On the outside, it was a chunky, upright little car, almost Fiat 500 sized by modern standards. It even had these like CRV-like taillights that ran up the C-pillars. Inside, it had an advanced digital instrument cluster that looked way ahead of its time. Honda even made sure it had the same level of comfort and convenience features as a Civic or Accord. Power windows, CD player, air conditioning, keyless entry, and even a heated windshield. This wasn't a hacked together prototype. Honda wanted you to feel like you were driving a real Honda. The EV Plus was full of thoughtful engineering for the late 1990s. Motor, a brushless DC motor making 66 horsepower and 203 pound-feet of torque. Not fast, but torquey around town. Battery, 28.7 kilowatt hour NIMH pack made up of 24 modules weighing over a thousand pounds. Range, official EPA rating of 81 miles. With careful driving in economy mode, testers managed up to 105 miles in the city. Performance, 0 to 30 in 4.9 seconds, 0 to 60 in a sluggish 17.7 seconds. Top speed just over 80 miles per hour. Charging, 120 volt household outlet, 24 hours full, a full charge. 240 volts charger, 80% in 2 hours, full in about 7 to 8 hours. 
efficiency about 48 miles per gallon equivalent. One of the most advanced features was the heat pump HVAC system. Instead of using energy hungry resistance heating like most EVs of the era and even like the later Chevy Volt in 2011, the EV Plus used the air conditioning system in reverse to provide cabin heat. Honda also emphasized safety. A triple protection system separated passengers from the battery, insulated all high voltage parts, and used crash sensors to automatically shut everything down in an accident. If you watch Honda's promotional VHS tape for the EV Plus, yes VHS, you'll see how seriously they tried to sell this thing as futuristic. They bragged about SUV-like seating height for better visibility, a completely flat floor for more interior space, folding rear seats, and a secure cargo cover, smart electronics that maximize range, including regenerative braking, which they said added about 20% more distance, and new low rolling resistance tires developed just for the EV Plus. It really was an honest attempt at showcasing consumers that EVs weren't just glorified golf carts. Here's the catch. The EV Plus was insanely expensive. Honda admitted the NIMH battery alone cost about $20,000. The whole car had an MSRP of $53,999, equivalent to over $100,000 in today's money. So Honda never actually let anyone buy one. They only offered three year leases at $455 per month, which included insurance, roadside assistance, and maintenance. Most leases were universities, research programs, or select California customers who passed Honda's strict screening. A few hundred regular drivers got to use them, but always under lease. At the end of the lease, Honda took them all back. No exceptions. Testers and early leasers had mixed experiences. The EV Plus was quiet, smooth, and actually pretty roomy inside. Around town, that instant torque made it feel peppy enough to 30 miles per hour. But highway driving drained the battery quickly and charging on 120 volts was painfully slow. Still, compared to GM's EV1, which was cramped and had limited practicality, the EV Plus was arguably the more user-friendly EV of the two. You could fit four people, a few bags, and drive in relative comfort. In the end, only about 300 EV Plus units were made. Some sources say 325, others 330, but the general consensus is around that number. When CARB later relaxed its ZEV mandate under pressure from automakers and oil companies, Honda no longer had to keep building it. So they ended the leases, recalled every car, and crushed them. A few chassis were saved and repurposed as test mules for Honda's FCX hydrogen fuel cell program, but the EV Plus, as a consumer car, simply disappeared. When Honda pulled the plug on the EV Plus in 1999, they pivoted hard towards hybrids. That same year, they launched the Honda Insight, a tiny aluminum body two-seater hatchback that became the first production hybrid sold in America, beating the Toyota Prius by a few months. The Insight used Honda's new integrated motor assist system, delivering up to 70 miles per gallon highway. It was cheap enough to sell in decent numbers with over 17,000 sold globally. Fast forward two decades and Honda released another full EV, the Honda E in 2020. Styled like a retro Civic, the Honda E was rear-wheel drive, had a 35.5 kilowatt battery and about 137 miles of range. It looked adorable, handled brilliantly, and even won design awards. But with a base price of around $40,000, limited space, and modest range, it sold poorly. Only about 12,500 units were built before Honda discontinued it in 2004, and it wasn't sold in the US at all. The EV Plus may have been a compliance car, but it showed flashes of brilliance. It had NIMH batteries before anyone else, a heat pump HVAC system before the Chevy Volt, a remote key fob with charge status before Tesla, and a roomy four-passenger design. Yes, it was expensive, it was painfully slow, and ultimately doomed. But it proved Hana could build a real EV decades before the modern wave hit. I think it's interesting to understand the history of EVs, especially the ones from the 90s. There's a few more bizarre ones that I'll eventually cover as well. As for modern EVs, I don't really care for them, but these early attempts are fun to learn about. I appreciate you making it to the end. If you aren't already subscribed, why not hit that button? I'm not AI, and you're supporting a person who cares about his audience. With that said, enjoy the rest of your week, and I will try and see you all next week.